Well, hey, Southern Oregon, welcome back to the real estate show on this holiday weekend. So glad you could join us today. We have Chris Barnett, the owner and principal broker for Realty Executive in Grants Pass. He's coming on the show today. Chris comes on every so often and we talk about Josephine County and things going on up there. So he also has an announcement to make. So it's going to be a great show. Super looking forward to it. Chris has been in the business a long time. He's he's a, a great agent to work with and he'll be coming into the studio shortly. In the meantime, let's check our local statistics. We had another little shift in the market, but that's why we check this week to week. We're looking for the micro trends to turn into macro trends. So let's start with Josephine County this week. The prices year over year this week in Josephine County are down 18%. The average single family residential home uh, costing $380,750. The number of solds in Josephine County year over year were neutral. They didn't go up, they didn't go down. We had 14 residential closings on SOMLS this week in Josephine County. The number of listings, however, were up year over year this week. They were up 10% in Josephine County. There were 284 active listings in the residential market on SOMLS in Josephine County. We really do need those listings. So yay for Josephine County, at least they had more listings. Jackson County year over year prices were up only 1%. So that's about even. The average single family home in Jackson County this week costing $523,087 in the residential market. The number of sold year over year in Jackson County were up 14% this week. Yay for Jackson County on that. There were 14 residential closings on SOMLS in Jackson County this week. The number of listings in Jackson County this week year over year we're up 9%. Another piece of good news. We had 652 active listings on SOMLS this week in Jackson County in the residential market. So good news, at least in the listing department for Jackson County uh, and also for the number of sold. So a little bit of good news here and there. Let's get to Klamath County. Klamath County this week, year over year prices were down 1%. That's about, you know, even uh, the average single family home in Klamath County this week, costing $303,137,000. The number of solds year over year in Klamath County were down 38% this week. There were eight closings on SOMLS in Klamath County residential market this week. The number of listings in Klamath County year over year were down 3% this week. There were 219 active residential listings on SLMLS this week in Klamath County. So you can see uh, week to week, our market is still trying to settle. That's something we're going to talk to Chris Barnett about from uh, Realty Executives up in Grants Pass. He's uh, coming in now, but in the meantime, we still need more listing folks. Uh, so if you are thinking of selling, we still are short the number of listings, but we still have more than we did last year. So perfect, happy medium, I think. Well, Chris, it is so good to see you again. Thanks for coming back on the show. You bet, Alice. Thanks for having me. So um, we've got a lot to, to catch up on because it's been a little while um, why don't you bring us up to speed about what you've been doing and how real estate is going? Well, of course, uh, you know, I'm with Realty Executives International. We have a franchise in Grants Pass that covers Southern Oregon, and we work with all the agencies out there. We're all in this together, like I say, as realtors and brokers. And, uh, you know, 2024 has got off to a little bit of a rocky start. We know that. I think you and I were trying to catch up earlier in the year and timing just didn't work. But we came out of mid-year uh, last year, July, and I started seeing things really change swifty, uh, swiftly after July, and things kind of slowed down. And the main reason why was, as you know, the interest rates went up, 
People got used to those 3% and lower or 3.5% lower interest rates. But like you and I have talked in the past when I bought my first home, I mean, back in, you know, 25 years ago, uh, the interest rates were at... Um, nine and a half percent and uh at that time, <laughs> yeah and i had good credit and it was like you know what if you wanted to buy a house you just bit the bullet and you paid it and you said hey and then if interest rates did go down which they have over the years then you can do what they call a refinance and when you refinance it then you can Go ahead and get that lower interest rate and then lower your payments that way but it was never meant to uh, you know, we we always were like, OK, when do I buy? Do I keep renting? And look, I rented for almost 20 years of my life and nobody told me to buy a house. And then I, I got into real estate and I'm like, well, you can't be in real estate unless you own a house. You know, I always thought, how can you sell the product if you don't own the product? Right. Because we are the best sales people for what we sell in its home ownership and the pride of home ownership. And we want every American out there to have that opportunity. And I think that uh, when you get to that point in life where it's like, you know what, I kind of like where I'm at, you anchor down and you pay yourself back. And, you know, homes were never meant to give you that huge profit that some people have experienced over the few years, luckily. Um, homeownership was always meant for you to live in your house for free down the road. Over time, if you lived in it, say 30 years, then it paid you back enough to where you're like, wow, uh, if I sell it, I'll get my money kind of back. And you can always sell it back to what you paid for it. And then sub. And we've kind of got a little spoiled, I think, Alice, because, you know, everybody's like, got to make a profit, got to make a profit. We all want to make a profit. OK, that's normal. However, home ownership was to say, hey, uh, how about getting rent or, or, or your payments uh, kind of offset? by uh, living in it longer and then maybe build some equity into it and then sell it. And then hopefully your rent wasn't as high as you thought it was because we all got to live somewhere. We all have got to pay, whether it's a mortgage or rent. Uh, even if you own your home free and clear, you got to pay what they call property taxes. So that, <laughs> those, are still, those are still things and, and people like, uh, you know, are stuck in HOAs or stuff like that. You still have a payment. But uh, the beauty of home ownership still lives. People want to do it. It's getting harder and harder, Alice, as we know, for our younger generation to afford a house. Um, my kids, uh, you know, it's amazing. I got one that just bought a house and she's 19. And I said, well, oh, you beat dad good. because dad waited later. And uh, it was good credit, uh, longevity on the job and saving up a little bit for that down payment. Um, one thing we don't see a lot is people saving up for that down payment. And I think that you know, I know we we ask a lot of sellers to pay the closing costs, and it's going to be more difficult to ask sellers for that even if this commission structure change uh, that they're talking about with oh, NAR. Oh, yeah, we should talk uh, about that. Is, yeah, it's a big, big subject. So, um, and I don't know how that's going to work out because sellers are already getting stretched paying all these fees. You know, uh, of course, they pay us to represent uh, buyers and sellers, which I think our industry is top notch when it comes to that. Uh, we have the ethics, we have the values, we have the training. Um, and I was thinking about other professions and I go, you know what, being a realtor, we have some tough standards. We have to get reeducated every two years. So a lot of professions that get the license, it's like, eh, well, you've been doing it, we're okay. And then there's some that are regulated more uh, like ours, where we have to stay in the know, times change, things change. But when you're dealing with people's biggest investment of their life, uh, you know, you have to have people that know what they're doing in the field, Alice. And you and I have been in the business a long time. And it's like, I like knowing that I help somebody get out of a home and into a home. And I think you and I, we go to bed at night thinking, hey, I helped somebody today. It's not easy. And I tell people, do not get into this business if you think it's easy. <laughs> and and Because people get into this business, Alice, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to start the stopwatch and see how long you last. And most of them don't last a year and a half. Um, uh, it is expensive to be a broker in this business. You got to uh, I tell people you got to pay to play, which means save up money for a rainy day. 
when you don't have an income coming in or you didn't sell a house that's not an escrow, then uh, how are you going to pay your mortgage? How are you going to pay your utilities? Uh, well, uh, they haven't really thought that out. And I think uh, part of the real estate exam, Alice, I think they should teach you how to budget. And they don't really do that in the exam because being a broker, you are your own person and you do have fees with office fees and stuff like that, that uh, uh, I don't think sometimes is relayed properly, you know? Yeah, they don't and... see it as their own business. That's that's kind of always a surprise for me. I, I think right now with today's economy, you should have five to $10,000 to start any business, some businesses yeah. more. Um, but for real estate, you got to buy signs. You know, I you agree. Got, you, you, yeah. it, there's like all the fees. Gas. Gas. Yep. Gas. <laughs> automobile. I mean, people go out and buy an expensive automobile. And I'm like, wait, 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 wait till you get established. Then you can upgrade to the nice car that you'd like to to uh, drive people around in or meet people at. And I go, but it doesn't happen overnight. Um you and I and, and some of the people that have been in the business a long time know that you put in a lot of hours and you well, put a lot of investment. Yeah. 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 We're and not complaining, tell... folks. We're not complaining. We just no. like to educate people because sometimes it comes as a surprise to them how much it costs. Yeah. Well, and, and here's being a uh, brokerage like, like John L. Scott is and Realty Executives as well. It's like we have to pay our franchise fees. Okay. Oh, yep. Yep. Then and, there's that. And then there's that. I mean, there's, it's business. So I tell everybody, I, I love it when people say, why well, I, I can go to this firm and I, I have zero fees and I go, nothing <laughs> well, and I, we're going to talk more about that. We're talking to Chris Barnett, realty executives, uh, Josephine County comes on the show every so often. Uh, don't touch that dial. We'll be right back after a quick word from our sponsors. Well, hey, Southern Oregon, welcome back to The Real Estate Show. We're talking to Commander Chris Barnett, Realty Executive, Southern Oregon of Josephine County, one of my favorite agents. And we were just uh, chewing the fat a little bit about um, it's great when new agents come into the business, but they sometimes misunderstand they're starting a business. Isn't that right, That's Chris? Correct, yeah. That's absolutely correct. And and the good news is, I mean, there's a so we were talking about all the things, how the, the market's changing. And one thing that I tell agents all the time is it's going to correct itself. It always does. It always so be, does. Yeah, it does. But be prepared to stay in it for the long haul, not the short term. And if you have tough times to make it ends meet, I tell people you might want to put your license on suspension or inactive for a little bit and maybe get another job somewhere until the market recovers a little bit if you can't make ends meet. Uh, all the good realtors that have been around a long time know the ups and downs of this business. And it's just like if you own any other business. I've owned other businesses as well. And, you know, you have your peak seasons and you have your off seasons. And I say, you know, you just got to prepare, you know, and our seasons are cyclic. It's weather uh, yeah. dependent as well. Uh, when we had all the snow and rain and stuff, people don't go out and really look at homes during those times. But and then people don't really put their homes on the market during those times. Yeah, so let's talk right now, about that because we sure. have we have kind of a long couple of years of people not wanting to put their houses on the market. And when you first came into the studio, we were talking a little bit about the lower interest rates, but we also have just people dragging their feet. You know, they want to move, but the world is weird. So are you getting much of that from people up there? Yeah, it's starting to change the mindset is starting to change a little bit now where I'm seeing more homes coming on the market now all, all of a sudden. And I think what happened is uh, when things change drastically, everybody freezes for a little bit. It's kind of like gas prices. When they went up to $5 a gallon, people stopped driving. It was like, oh, no, we're not going on that trip. Why? It's going to cost me another $100 to go on that. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, RV travelers and stuff like oh, that. Yeah. I, I watch that industry, too, because they don't go down to Arizona or be snowbirds if the gas is really high. I've noticed that. It's really weird. Um, but if you want to get away and you have the money to do it, it's going to cost you a little bit more, but still live. And I tell people, if you really want to move or you really have to move and you want to be near, near family or it's for health reasons or a job, everything's relevant for today. So 
just because uh, the market was what it was two years ago, three years ago, doesn't mean it won't happen again, but we don't have a crystal ball to say when. So it's a risk. It's a stock market kind of thing. You know, you invest into a house, but the good thing about housing is normally you'll be okay. You know, even if you had to take a little bit of a loss on a house that you bought a year ago, not very much of a drop, but if you can make up for it on a good job promotion or job change somewhere and you have to relocate, or maybe you're going to a different area where housing is cheaper, you'll make up with that deficit. And I tell people that and they get that. Once they, you explain it, they get it. But I said, if you're local and you're trying to upgrade and you're going to take a loss, well, the good news is you probably can get a loss on another house because the market is lower and they're going to right. ask lower. Yeah. Because I did that. I did that, gosh, 14 years ago when I bought my house, I built a brand new house and the market crashed. And I really wanted to buy this other house that had some acreage. And that price was lower. So I said, well, let me lower my price on my house a little bit. I got a hook on it, sold it, and put that equity into the new mortgage on the other house I live in today. And I'm like, it all worked out. I kind of did a lateral where you still had the same payments, but wow. you have to mentally in your mind go, I'm, I'm going to be okay because I'm going to make up on it uh, down the road. And then you look at your equity today, 14 years later, I'm okay. Smartest uh, thing you ever did was take a loss on that other house. Yeah. And I and I and I kick myself in the butt thinking because I've watched it resale over the years. And oh. of course it sold <laughs> the one for you more. like <laughs> so it always it sold, but what would have happened if I would have sold it higher, I would have paid much more for the house that I'm in today. So I think everything is relevant at the time. If you buy high, if you sell high, you're gonna buy high. If you sell low, you're gonna buy low. So as long as people can get in that mindset of going, it's okay. Uh, you're going to be okay. And the interest rates are going to be what they are and know that the interest rates could change. And when they do refi, that's where savings comes in. You got to save a little bit for that refi because it does cost you some money. But when you do that, you go, Hey, my, my payments are a few hundred dollars less a month. Um, and you know, banks are smart and they know how to tag that interest on, uh, where it's affordable to you today, but you're still going to have that added on to your mortgage down the road. Well, and it was interesting last year because um, the market did not go down as much as we were afraid it would. Remember, because like in the beginning Correct. of 2023, we were really bracing ourselves and then it went down. It was soft, but it wasn't that soft. Um, and, you know, God bless those buyers that that slogged through it because they got a little better price. Yeah. You know? They did. I yeah. we we've helped some people, you and I, and I was like, you know, we sold their house for a good decent price, and they still made up for it on a purchase. Uh, people that are really coming out ahead on that are people that are downsizing from their big homes, uh, empty nesters. Uh, they're just two in a big house. Our whole family was in it, and now they're like, I don't need all this house. So I've done a lot of those last year where I uh, sold their big house and bought them a small house. And they were just cozy and just dried in. And then they had a little extra money to put in the bank for a rainy day. Oh, my. And then, and then they actually felt good. Uh, retirement felt good. They felt secure. And if they didn't do it, they wouldn't be living in the place that they really wanted to get away from because maybe a two-story or a bigger house was too much yard maintenance, too much they broke their back or or they had some health problems. Um, yeah. We see that a lot in life. It's just, hey, uh, I used to be able to walk up and down stairs. Now I'll fall down the stairs. So it's like, yeah. I don't want to do that. <laughs> and um, I, I think that's the beauty of if you can see that it's going to be okay, we have to hold their hand as brokers and go, trust me, I've, we've done this for a while and everything works out. And it, yeah. and it always does. Yeah. And uh, you and I uh, love helping people get from where they are to where they want to be. And when you're doing the downsizing, that is a very emotional, bittersweet move for people. It's not like any other move, don't you think? Because I know you do a lot of those. You were just talking about it yeah. from last year. The emotional yeah. difficulty, it, the attachment it, to the home. It is the mindset of going I have a lady right now, bless her heart. She's she's just awesome. And she's just doesn't 
make that switch in her mind yet, although her whole family has told her she needs to do it. And she just has an attachment. We call it attachment issues. We all love the car that we drive. And then, then you see something else and you're like, well, I think I can part with my car today. So I think that when they finally realize that enough's enough, then they give you that call and they go, you know what? I'm ready, Chris mm -hmm. and uh, or Alice. And uh, you know what? Let's do it. And then we don't look back because we look at, we look for the next exciting chapter in their life. I call it chapters. Because, hey, you know, it's just a material thing. Your memories are still going to be with you in your heart. I go, you have pictures today. You have videos today. You can always go back and look at your house. That's and I have I not had, <laughs> I, yeah, and I have never had anybody go back and says, oh, yeah, I want to move back to my old house. <laughs> Nobody really does that. Now, people say, let's uproot my house and I'll put it over here. But in reality, that can't happen. And uh, it doesn't happen. I've never had one yet. So it's just when people finally in their new place, they're always like, yeah, there are things I loved about my old house, but you know what? I'm okay where I'm at now. And then they start living in that moment. And I think everything works out in housing like that. It really does. Yeah. And that's why um, a lot of us brokers are so happy when we go to sleep at night because we get to help people do that. Um, and it's... Uh, it's not for everybody. <laughs> that's for sure. Oh, it's not. So speaking of uh, what's going on in the market, uh, do you have any predictions for 2024? We're just finishing our first quarter here. What do you, what do you think is going to happen next? <laughs> do you dare? <laughs> well, it, it is a crystal ball that we all try to look in and being a principal broker and a, a franchise owner, I always try to look where the agents are going to go, or what direction. And I think that... Uh, we are going to have some changes coming up in July, I believe, with uh, the NAR thing. We talked a little bit about that NAR thing. Um, the uh, National Association for Realtors had lawsuit about buyers, brokers, commissions, and how, you know, it's going to be paid for by the seller separately and, and all this. And I think we're still so new into that. We really don't know what the outcome is going to be on that. Yeah, it hasn't really been approved by the courts. What are your thoughts about, uh, they want to hide the commission being paid to the buyer's agent. I mean, it took us a long time to get them to disclose that to the I general know. public. What, what what are your thoughts on that, Chris? So you, as you know, you and I, and I've had this discussion with many other brokers that the commission that is set forth in the MLS is the compensation that you get uh, to bring your buyers to the house. And uh, and we don't have no set rate. We all know that. It's on our quiz every two years. There is no set commission of a X percent. But we're going to have is. to take a, a quick yeah. break. We're talking to uh, Commander uh, Chris Barnett, owner and principal broker of Realty Executive Southern Oregon. We'll be right back. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome back to The Real Estate Show. We get to chat with uh, one of my favorite, favorite people, Commander Chris Barnett. He's the owner and principal broker of Realty Executives up in uh, um, Josephine County. And uh, right before the break, we were talking about some of the uh, potential changes that are coming to the real estate world and the, um, the lack of disclosure that they're suggesting, talking about not disclosing the a buyer's commission anymore to the general public, I think is rubbing both of us the wrong way. It is variable according to uh, you and the seller. And I think that those commissions uh, being paid for by the seller uh, are going to be a little bit mixed up how that works. I think we've worked hard to post that. I think it's a guarantee for the brokers to go, hey, if you're going to bring your buyer and they like it, then we put a, a fee in there that you will be compensated for. Um, some brokers, and I really have to educate them as a principal broker and say, hey, look, you know, there's no set fee. Everything's negotiable. When sellers come to us to list their house and you put X amount in there, um, we have to do what our sellers tell us to do. It's a unilateral uh, compensation plan. They don't know how much we're getting. OK, so here's the thing. I've offered more to buyer's agents than I yeah. get as a listing agent. Yeah, and, I and buyers, too. a lot of buyer agents, I'm a buyer agent. They just don't understand it. I've never, ever sold a house and looked at the commission what I'm getting paid. 
Never. Me either. I, yeah. I, but I've had brokers lately call and I said, you can't do that. I you go, you can't do that. <laughs> you can't, but they, they think, oh yeah, sure. It never hurts. I go, no, because you're steering the customer away from a home that they would like. Yeah. And you're basing it on commissions. Yeah. And I go, I think that is wrong uh, in every way because they teach you don't discriminate a house because they're offering X amount of commission. Uh, we've gone past some of the discount brokerages that we knew that were around a lot, uh, you know, years ago. They're not as much in there as 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 today, but it doesn't prohibit me from selling their houses, um, Fizbo's or anything like that. If somebody says, hey, I want to buy that house, Chris, and it's available through Alice, I'm just going to call Alice and say, hey, Alice, is that house available? My client really likes it. And I look at the paycheck later. I never look at what it is yeah, up front. Yeah, and I think that's part uh, of having integrity. Oh, totally agree. And I think they shouldn't change it. I think what they've worked so hard to accomplish should be on there. And I, I think this lawsuit, whatever happened in the Midwest or wherever it originated, um, it, it is whatever they did, they probably sounds like they did something bad. Somebody didn't like it and did something about it. It doesn't mean that the whole entire uh, organization is like that. Um, people mess up in different places. And, and you know, I've read up on it. I've heard on it. Everybody wants to give their own interpretation of it. But the bottom line is, is we're a fair business, which means that if you publicly disclose what a buyer is, buyer's agent is going to get paid, I welcome that buyer's agent to sell our property. What, oh, what we would love. Yeah, we love that. Well, what this is going to do is going to make everybody their own listing agent. And then how do we know they're going to cooperate correctly? They're not. And uh, I, I do feel like it's going to tear up our industry uh, to the fact that, uh, hey, Alex, I don't want to work with you because my seller doesn't want to. I, I just don't feel that this is going to go in the right direction if they don't disclose this stuff. I think that people are going to get burned. I think there are some agents that feel like they should be compensated to bring a buyer, but then the agent didn't pay them appropriately. Uh, well, uh, it was going to be this amount, but no, we decided to only pay you this. I, I just don't like that. I think that uh, uh, whatever is posted uh, in the MLS, when you show the property and make the offer is the the compensation that is disclosed. Well, properly. yeah. And I think a lot of us, you know, we really worked hard to get it to be public knowledge so that it's I know. full disclosure, but you know, we still have to go through the court approvals. So fingers sure. crossed, maybe uh, the department of justice will um, weigh in on something more measured. Um hmm. But in the meantime, we're still selling, you know, property in Southern Oregon and it has picked up, hasn't it, the last few months? It, it has. Uh, we still have a lot of more homes. We're kind of topsided, if you will. Uh, we have more homes in the 500 plus category, 500 to a million than we do 500 and below. So it's lopsided. People were trying to get a little bit more and they're like dipping in the fives. And I go, look, Anything half a million and more, you're competing with a lot bigger pool than you are in the 500 and below category. We know the hot spot, 350 to 450 seems to be the hot spot. If you can get your home in that category, we know that you're going to have a better success rate. Uh, and people are, are on the market a lot longer because they want what happened two years ago. They want what happened their neighbor got. And I go, that was yesterday. Today's today but I know you'll make up on your loss on the purchase. So I said, that's the only best thing I can relate to you, how you're going to be okay selling your house cheaper than your neighbor is that you will make up on it on the purchase. I look, things are down, there's price cuts, there's make an offer and let's see what, what we can do. And that's where we come in as brokers to try to negotiate that for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of interesting that um, there's something like over 30% of the listings have had at least one price change. And that's actually more of a normal market, right? <laughs> we, just, mm -hmm. we just got so spoiled uh, the last yes. few years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And people still have a lot of equity. We're not saying that, you know, you're gonna lose your shirt. <laughs> no, if you've been making your payments and you've been in it for a few years and, and you know, 
most people would on average, I think the average was what every seven years uh, somebody moves is the average, but we're finding people move more often than that sometimes. And mm. it may be because they want a pool, they want their kids to be closer to something, they want a farm. Our, our habits have changed. Um, it That's used true. to be yeah, it used to be you'd be in your house. Like my mother-in-law, we sold her house a few years ago and she moved to Florida. <laughs> made up, She made up on it and I moved to Florida. But she lived in her house for 40 years. So she owned her house. So she paid it off. She did everything she could. She even did a refi. When times were tough, she got a refi, got a little bit of money, equity line, whatever. and But she paid it off. And then she's like, okay, I'm at retirement. What do I do? And it's like, well, you might want to cash out and see if that money can get you further somewhere else. Because uh, in Oregon, she would love to stay in Oregon, but she wanted something new. And I go, well, you can always return back to Oregon. So she moved to Florida and she made up on a purchase there. We facilitated that as well as brokers being from afar. Um, you can do what they call referral fees and work with a broker in a different area of the country and say, hey, look, I, I got family here. Could you take care of them? And then uh, you can ask for a referral fee. Doesn't matter. I've never had a problem with referral fees. It doesn't matter how little uh, it is. It's there to help the customer and ha have a, a handoff if you yeah. will, and your family feels better and your customers feel better about that. Yeah, because so, yeah. they're not just doing it cold with the stranger. Um, yes. uh, going back to um, market uh, cycles, you know, we had the big crash in 07, 08, 09, depending on when your neighborhood got hit. Um, yeah. We are just very at the very beginning of getting a few here and there. And I'm just wondering, um, as we talk about 2024, do you think the market strength is enough that we're really not going to see very many foreclosures? We're not going to have another crash? Correct. I think we would have saw more already on the horizon. I think the economy after COVID, that was our big years of selling houses, but then people were off of work. Now the workplace is going, please apply. We need people. <laughs> uh, so honestly, there's jobs aplenty out there. I don't think there's no reason where people are getting laid off. There's more people getting hired than laying off, but it's finding those quality workers that want to go back to work and those with, that are doing are finding out that they're being handsomely paid for what they they do um i'm looking at the job skills out there and everybody's getting paid a decent a decent wage nowadays it's just i think they can afford the house and i think that uh people are not going into foreclosure because there is jobs aplenty people aren't getting pink slips and laying off the good news, too, is we're in election year, and every four years an election year happens. I always see people kind of freeze. What's going to happen if a new president comes in or what does happen? And, and I don't like to put politics in, in real estate, but it is a question that all my customers always ask. What do you think is going to happen? Do you think we're going to get more of the same, or do you think we're going to have a change, or what? And everybody thinks differently on this. And I think yeah, we're speaking more here. as business people and not yeah, totally business, yeah. no politics yeah. here, but, but, but it's a reality. And I ask people, were you better off four years ago or you're better off today? And everybody tells me they're better off four years ago. <laughs> so well, I, I said, I pick it up here with uh, commander, Chris Barnett. Uh, we'll be right back after words from our sponsors. Don't go away. We got more news for you. Just a quick reminder, you can listen to this episode with Chris Barnett of Realty Executives again tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. on our new radio home, the Ace 1300 AM. Well, hey, Southern Oregon, welcome back to the Real Estate Show. Just a quick reminder, you can listen to this episode with Chris Barnett of Realty Executives again tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. on our new radio home, the Ace 1300 a.m. So Chris, uh, we have so much to talk about and we're running out of time, but can uh, can we finish up on the thoughts on the election year and what that does to real estate or not? Yes, I think when people are, uh, we got November still. I mean, November is still, you know, some months away. 
But I think that when we have a change or the same, we don't know what's going to happen. It's coming down to Biden and Trump is what the two nominees are, are right now. And I think that whenever that election happens, you're going to find either people are going to freeze or people are going to feel good and start making changes, knowing that maybe the economy is going to go in a different direction. Whether either president can do that, it's, it's an unknown and how fast they're going to do it. But I, I can tell you from in the field, and people like to talk politics. I don't, but I mean, uh, people do like to talk about it and we are sucked into it because they're like, what do you think the future holds? I think it's going to be great. I think that if we get a change in the presidency, I think people are going to start feeling good again about some positive changes that could happen from the previous president that we already know was so tried economically, and true. economically, economically, president. under President Trump, no matter if you liked him or not, he was good for the economy. He was good for the growth of the country during his four years. OK, and we know that we could get that back, having him as a leader again, just by we saw it. He just didn't get to finish his four years. He, he got cut short. And I think everybody wanted to see him progress and, and take the country in a different direction. He unfortunately got beat out by President Biden and um, President Biden's in. And under the four years, I always hope the best for any president that's in there voted in by the people, I'm hoping that there was going to be a great change. I'm sorry, but I have to report that there hasn't been a positive change. Um, not well, in we're the looking economy. For, and we're looking for economic change. Economic you know, change. As small business and people, for sure. Absolutely. And I've seen businesses suffer. And I'm like, why are you closing? Well, it's just not as profitable as it used to be. Um, taxation, it could be local government as well. Uh, it could be a lot of factors. And uh, I just think that people will feel good again to be in that moving state again. I'm really yeah. excited. I'm looking forward to November. Well, How's and <laughs> um, this is a perfect lead in because you are a doer. And I like that you want to do something to help change things in Southern Oregon. And uh, I saw that you're running for commissioner. Congratulations. Yes, Alice. That I can't is believe awesome. I'm do I can't believe I'm doing it. It got to a point where I've always served in my jobs. Um, uh, public service. I've been in the military 33 years. I've served in law enforcement. I've served the public. I've served people no matter what. And I got to the point where finally people were going, hey, look, Chris, we need some good people to run and good people that want to care for the people in the community. And since I've been there so long in Grants Pass, Josephine County, I'm like, you know what? What's it entail? And I kind of knew what it entailed, but I've been going to meetings. <laughs> I've been, I, I kind of know. It's just that I was always disappointed that why some people got into government, but didn't execute what they promised or didn't execute what I thought they were going to do. And over the years, I've seen that build up where people just weren't interested. And I go, well, you know, the people that you elect really determine how the outcome in our economies are and how we our way of life is. And so I, I'm stepping in that arena for the, all the right reasons. I, 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 I'm all about the American values, American dream. I want people to succeed. I want people to feel good about where they live. I want those freedoms that people love in our area in Southern Oregon. And I think it's time that I kind of get in there to go, I'm going to fight for the people. And uh, it's not for a job. It's not for an agenda. It's not for uh, anything else than running for the people. And I think every public uh, office that, that people do uh, go into should put people first. And I think we've kind of lost sight of that in some uh, positions I've seen. I'm like, they have no idea what little old me in Grants Pass or, or Josephine County is doing versus yeah. at the state level or, or, you know, it's just, I think at the local government as a county commissioner, there's three that run a county. I think that uh, there's two positions available and I'm one of those candidates and I'm looking forward to well, so giving it a good shot. Yeah. So what would your duties entail? And it is a, is it a, it's a volunteer. I mean, you're elected, but you know, you're, you're it, working outside of your job. You're not there every day during the day. Are you? Yeah, so it's a full time position. So oh, it is, it a, is a salary. Position. Yep, it's a salary position. There's three. They're, they're the CEOs of the county. So basically, management, administration, oversight, policy, 
uh, looking over your agencies. Uh, I've got a lot of that experience in the Air Force. I've done big agencies, you know, big governments like that. And I've been on those command councils to where you've had to make executive decisions. So it's a lot like that. It's teamwork. And also, I want the taxpayers to feel good about who they elect, that they're looking out for their best interest. Mm -hmm. And I think that some people just don't understand they get into these positions and they don't understand that you really have got to be in touch with the people to understand what they want or don't want. Mm -hmm. And and if you vote in the wrong way, I think sometimes you're not doing what's in the best interest of the people. You're doing what's in the best, best interest of yourself. And that's not what I think uh, a, a representative in any public office should do. They should do what the majority of the people would like them to do. Well, that's this is what super exciting. Do you have any ideas? Uh, we only have about four minutes left, but okay. any ideas that uh, uh, changes you want to implement? Yeah, uh, the homeless uh, situation, I do want to help with that. Um, the city, uh, we are the county, so the county uh, has a, a job to do to make sure that uh, we keep things safe. And I think uh, homelessness is a big issue. Uh, repeal 110, which is a drug issue in the state. We're working with our representatives at the state yeah, level. How is that going? That it's going pretty good right now. From what I understand, there was a, a bipartisan agreement on that to try to um, come together and, and be stricter on those laws. And if you can be stricter on the laws, then we can start fining people for doing that openly in the parks or openly in the streets. And it might alleviate that issue. Um, some of the uh, uh, other things I like to do, public safety for all, public safety is at the top of everybody's list. I'm, I'm a law enforcement, so pass law enforcement. So I'm like, you know what? I'm all for that. I want to initiate the reserve program, volunteer programs, which doesn't cost the taxpayers more money. Everybody thinks, oh, well, they're going to ask for more money. Yeah, I, I, I'm really firm believer on the reserve. I was a reservist, so I understand that. Um, it's It's free. It's just give me some tools. I'll go out and you don't have to pay me a salary. I'll go do it and protect my community. Mm -hmm. um, also, I want unity in the community. I want our community to feel good again. Yeah, I want people to get along. Cool. Yeah, yeah I, I want unity in the community. So that's a big issue. I don't care what's where you're from or whatever. I said, I think there's room for all of us to come together and finally to work with the other agencies, which means our cities. Our county's a big place, just like Jackson County. You've got to have touch, uh, in touch with your cities and find out how can you be there for them. Um, government is, is, uh, it's not a, we, we're going to give you stuff all the time. We, we've we got to have a fine balance. It's like the taxpayers only want to pay so much. So we've got this pot of money. How do we disperse it properly? So we have all the functioning entities that the community wants. Well, oh, that's so exciting. Uh, was it a, was it a hard decision uh, to make with your family? Did you have to have a a lot of conversation about because you are a business owner and I didn't realize it was a, a full-time salary job. So yeah. I'm sorry about it. I didn't know so, that, but you're busy. So <laughs> Yeah. So I, I'm not going to shut my business down by no means, but I'm definitely going to take a back seat. Uh, I do have other agents. Of yeah, my you office do. You have do. such a great crew over there at Realty Executives. Yeah. So my wife, she's a principal broker too. So I, I, you know, the handoff will be good, but I think this is a stage in my life where I want to do something different for the community and help it in a positive way. And then uh, after my term or whenever I decided if I want to do two terms, I could, but I think after that, you kind of go, uh, I've done what I could do. It's time to hand it off to the next people. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think that uh, public service is a very uh, noble thing to do. It's scary. Uh, it costs a lot of money to campaign. I do know that. <laughs> and uh, you got to get the word out. And I think if you get the trust of the people, then they're going to know that you're going to look out for their best interest. Just kind of like real estate. They yeah. trust you. They're going to call on you again. You go to bed at night going, I did the best I could today. And I feel good about what I did. Well, we're yes. so, so happy for you. Best of luck on your election. Uh, Chris Barnett, Realty Executive Southern Oregon up in uh, Josephine County. Uh, you're always one of my favorite people. How about uh, 30 seconds? You give your cell phone so people can reach out. Yes, if you want to reach out to me directly, 541-660-5195 uh, or go to chrisbarnettbroker.com. And um, if you have uh, any issues that you would like to discuss, I'm uh, 
very transparent. I don't hide. You can find me. Just That's Google right. Chris Barnett, and uh, <laughs> I'll be more than happy to talk to you on the commissioner race and how real estate's affecting us, just like with Alice here today. So thank you, Alice. I do appreciate the time. Oh, we're just so happy to have you. And we'll have you back again before the election, see how it's going. That's all we've got time for, folks. We'll see you next time. Have a great Southern Oregon weekend. Bye now.